First of all, the tip-off on Abaoud coming from outside of Europe. What's your bet? Who gave that tip-off? Mm, I think the United States. I'm not sure, of course, and maybe we'll never know. But what we know for sure is that the United States had the close A to, uh, uh, on, uh, on Abaoud as they were, uh, they identified him as one of the most dangerous men in ISIS uh, at least a year ago. And some months ago, they, they even sent some uh, intelligence report to Europe on Abaoud. So I think they have the technical means to, to track people from uh, Middle East to Europe or to find people in Europe. They have a lot of technical means we don't have in, um, in Europe. So I think it could come from Washington. But of course, this is a speculation. Washington and not Morocco, where he originated from. Uh, I'm not sure that Morocco. Uh, Morocco has means in human intelligence in uh, in Europe, of course, because there is a large Moroccan community in Europe, and uh, the, the the Moroccan service have uh, have assets and have uh, uh, informators in this community, a lot of them, but they don't have technical means. So if it comes from, uh, I would say, if it comes from Morocco, it was very likely a human tip, a human intelligence, an asset, an agent inside or very near the, the network. If it comes from Washington, it was probably by technical means. And Claude Monique, uh, the interior minister here, saying France received no information from other European countries to signal that Abaoud had entered Europe until November the 16th. That's more than two days after those uh, Paris attacks. Uh, here we were all weekend thinking he was in Syria. Uh, is there an intelligence failure? The point is, uh, it's very early to say if there was an intelligence failure in this case. Uh, we, we must be conscious that Thousands of people, probably tens of thousands of people, criminals, I mean, terrorists or normal criminals, if I can say, are on the run in Europe or elsewhere in the world. And some of them escape to police and to intelligence services for years, if not for decades, without being spotted, without being uh, ever arrested. So in the case, if you, have the mo if you have some money, if you are clever, if you have the good, um, the, the, the ability to, 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 to find the, the, the good uh, uh, identity paper, identity documents, if, if you can rely on networks of friends who will uh, give you a, a, a room to sleep, a car to, to transport you from place one, uh, to another and so on, you could escape for a while. Uh, Abaoud, though, it seems, I mean, he, he's uh, linked to, for instance, the attack on that high-speed train in August, uh, the, 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 the Amsterdam-Paris train. He's able to hide in plain sight, it seems, in Belgium. Uh, a lot of questions being asked about Belgian intelligence. What I can say on Belgian intelligence, I, I read a lot of various and conflicting reports in the in the, 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 the media the last the last two days, three days. Uh, most of them uh, quite critical uh, on uh, Belgian intelligence. What I can tell you on Belgian intelligence, and I'm not. Uh, I was in French intelligence, so I have no special interest to be the lawyer of the, 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 the Belgian uh, intelligence services. What I can tell you is that, in my view, they are working quite well. But they are working well in a, in a limited legal frame. The, 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 the legal possibility, the legal means of the, the Belgian intelligence are not the same, for instance, as they are for the, the, the French or for the, the English intelligence. For instance, interception in communications uh, is just allowed for them for, since the last four or five years. That means uh, it took seven years after September 11 to authorize the Belgian intelligence to, 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 to intercept the, 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 the telephone and, and, and the, and the mail we're and communication And we're reading a lot of so reports on. here on that. So, we're reading a lot of yeah. reports here on that, Claude Monique, about, uh, you know, rivalries between uh, French and Flemish speaking services, the fact that uh, different administrations don't communicate no. with one another. 
excuse me if I put it in a non-polite way, this is bullshit. It doesn't exist. There is no rivalry between between German, between Dutch and and, and, and French speaking uh, services. There is no such such thing as a Dutch service. There is, of course, there are local polices, but actually the the, 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 the polices involved in this uh, in this uh, affair, uh, the, the Abaud affair in Molenbeek, in, in Brussels, all of them are, uh, are speaking the two languages. There is no such thing as, as a, a, a language rivalry in, uh, in Belgian intelligence. This is just, this is just a, a fiction. All right, but let's listen now to, uh, together uh, to Claude Moniquet, to the, the Belgian prime minister. And on this issue that you mentioned of the fact that uh, the, the Belgian law is behind the times uh, when it comes to tracking these people, uh, he, Charles Michel, before Parliament this Thursday, promising uh, more means and a more of a crackdown. We want to act along four major lines. First, to eradicate messages of hate and calls to violence. Second, to concentrate efforts and our means on individuals who have been flagged as potentially dangerous. Third, to strengthen the security measures. And finally, to act on an international level. All right, final point on this with you, uh, Claude Monique, a lot of fingers being pointed at this working-class neighborhood of Brussels, Molenbeek, uh, in Politico, uh, sorry, in Politico, yes, this Thursday, uh, they quoted a, a senator from the uh, opposition saying for 20 years an omerta kind of uh, reigned where the local mayor there uh, was uh, happy to court votes from immigrant communities and turned a blind eye to what was going on. What's your reaction to that? I think this is exactly what's happened. Uh, actually, they had the same uh, political majority, locally speaking, for 20 years. And the only goal of those people was to be re-elected, re-elected, and re-elected again. So they didn't want to see any problem, and they di didn't want to fix any problem, uh, such as, of course, uh, uh, radicalism, but also criminality, uh, uh, informal economy, all these kind of, th of thing, they just were blind to, the, to this. It was not of interest to them. And that's going to change? Uh, at least the majority has changed, but the point is that when you have uh, 20 or 25 years of bad habits, for instance in the police, which was forbidden to, to, to do a, to, to conduct a, a series of operations, you cannot change the mentality and you cannot change the, the way the people are thinking and, and, and working overnight. Claude Monique, many thanks uh, for joining us here on, on France 24. Claude Monique.